and thus the long-awaited day has come. My crown soon become even more so crushing. Lesser men think my crown a simple adornment of my station. They view it as gilded steel, a cap of dyed velvet and gemstones from lands they cannot even pronounce. I would gang say and rectify their misguided assumptions. This crown is responsibility. To the men who wage our wars, to the women who birth our children, to those very children who one day shall take our place. It's an obligation towards God in upholding the blessedness of his almighty dominion. And yet the kinship is also a duty to the family we're born into. An onus to guard the dynasty and ensure its prosperity. When I was a youth in my father's court, he taught me the magnitude of protecting the lineage, of fighting <laughs> for kinsfolk who I may perhaps not meet in my mortal lifetime. He taught me that family and legacy mattered most, and that without Christian stability in the West, our line of success was in significant peril. So many lessons my father taught me. And it wouldn't be until his crown rested upon my head that I came to understand them. He and I did not agree on all matters on this earth. And there were passing moments when I wished him gone. And not a single day goes by that I did not think of him. I loved him so dearly. It was everything I aspired to be. It was his passing. I was not ready to be the ruler of the Franks. My life had been a dawning sun up until his death. And with it came a darkness blacker than midnight. The light of the Lord touched me and brought me out of the abyss that I'd allowed myself to inhabit. His embrace saved me. And thus, I became his to command. As king, I turned to what was truly imperative. I made it my holy quest to unite the kingdoms of men under God's grace. My lady Europa was in shambles, torn apart by a thousand obtuse infidels who did not believe in Jesus Christ. Pious peace could not be realized with their subsistence. Three decades of my life I spent warring these heathens. Over countless triumphant battles I heard my men fall, shouting out my name. Oh, son of Adam, of my Lord, save us, save us, us from these terrible wearing skin of men. For the Savior's cross will burn the crimson in burn on the hands of those that believed in fallacious idols. The Saxons of Verden would come to understand my inability to abandon my oath. I ordered that all and any who had not undergone baptism be put to death. Four and a half thousand Saxons were beheaded that day. The rest 
ran to the nearest brook to plunge their heads. Historians may depict me in their chronicles as a ruthless monster. I know. And all good Christians know that all of my actions have been for the future of our faith. Because I refuse to share the earth with fiends who believe in false gods and deny our Lord Jesus Christ. So I once believed. Pope Leo, God bless him, wishes to anoint me as Emperor of the Romans this very noon. It is an honour without compare, and yet I find myself touting my ability to uphold it. Ever since my father's death, I've wanted to serve God. Within my grasp is the seat of ultimate servitude. I should be weeping with joy. And I... I have never been more remiss. All that my heart sings for is family of my gorgeous children who are growing up so, so rapidly. My faithful wife, whose passion for it burns fiercer than the sun. Oh, my head. My head pounds at the thought of my duties withdrawing me from their love and caress. But this is what you wanted. Is it not? To serve the Lord as his utmost servant? A vassalage that, alas, tugs you away from those that you desire most. <laughs> what a chest of a king I am. Why? Do I question whether my inner turmoil will mar my religion? If my reign shall be disastrous and short? What if I, a most devoted son of God, became the instrument of his destruction? What if my reign grows to be Lady Europa's most passionate abuser? Would my father approve of my actions? Would my family live long and happy lives? All of these things I do not know. Of course, I am Charlemagne the Great, King of the Franks and the Lombards, and soon to be Emperor of the Romans. I'm not a man who mistrusts himself, otherwise I would not be in this position. I shall not let my anxieties vex me. My path may have been paved by the hands of God. The legs that walk it are mine own. Instead of fearing for the future, I shall be the one to make it great. Not for the Lord, but for my kin. I have done enough in one lifetime to satisfy you, Father. Now, I must be an emperor for my people. I shall encourage education in my land. So that mine and all Children shall grow with strength in their brains as well as their arms. 
Each of my markets shall produce a thousand. No, a thousand, thousand coins, so that no mother goes hungry. In our hospitals shall mend the men so bravely fought in our war. I shall be a better father, a better husband, and when my children's children are born, I shall be an even greater grandfather. My actions in the now shall beget a grander future for my existing family and progeny in a hundred years. <laughs> and it seems I may truly be ready to bear the weight of my crown. 